Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CBC Gem and Saskatel Curling Stadium live coverage from the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. We are live here in Swift Current quarterfinal action this morning. My name is Sean Joyce, joined at uh, with this broadcast for it by Jeff Chambers, and we have a matchup already underway. Silvana Tiranzoni facing off against Penny Barker. Long day ahead for the teams hoping to do well here. So no, uh, not wasting any time getting started. Leadstone's already in play. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Um, yeah, looking forward to some great action today. And uh, I know a lot of these teams, especially this morning, will be starting to feel the fatigue, but they're, they're all looking forward to hopefully playing uh, three different games today to get right to the finals. But uh, it's been a sh hard pack, a lot of games uh, being played already. So we'll definitely see how the, the bodies hold up here and if they can put uh, some great shots together all day today. So Banatir and Zoni, one of the strongest teams in the world for a number of years now. They did have a couple of lineup changes this year. It's it's not uncommon. You've seen a lot of that uh, as the Olympic cycle ended. Tiranzoni still calling the game, throwing third stones for this team. Molina Petz throws the fourth stones. That hit made by Carol Howard, who was one of the new players at uh, second this year, and Briar Herleman rounds out the team playing lead. Penny Barker, by contrast, one of the few teams, arguably, in the world that has remained intact this year from... Uh, the team they played with last year, the reigning Saskatchewan champions from the Scotties last year. Penny Parker is the skip. Christy Gamble, the third. This is the second. Jenna Angle and Danielle Sosinski throws the lead stones. Yes, there's definitely been a lot of change up out in the curling world, and uh, the Tiranzoni team here have uh, two new additions to it, but they've uh, been blending pretty well and and they're just coming off a big hot win at the grand slam event last week so this team has been really melding they're uh, ranked number one right now in the world rankings and uh they look forward to seeing if they could get another victory right here in swift current saskatchewan but i know uh barker's uh, ready to uh throw everything at her that she can to uh, prevent that from happening Interesting path for both of these teams getting here. They both lost their first game, and Terrazzoni went on a run through the B to qualify through the B event. And by virtue of that B event win, uh, is the higher seeded team in this matchup. That's how she's got last rock here in the first end of play. Penny Barker lost her first two, and then went on a roll. So both coming in here on uh, on a bit of a roll. Absolutely. Here we just see an exchange of rocks in the first end, uh, so nothing too wild. A little bit of a hit and roll out. Might have spun back in there and caught the back corner. They're going to have a quick look at that. First indication is that that rock just stayed out of the rings by the looks of it, but they're going to come around 
left and see if they can hide one under the center. Both sweepers on this pretty hard. They're trying to make sure it's there. Now they get a little bit of relief, so line's looking pretty good. Gonna see if they can make this in there. It looks like it's gonna come a little short though. Still a useful rock, but just a little short of the rings. <laughs> this allows uh, Penny to take advantage and see if she can hide one in behind those two. little bit of early sweep just to keep it clean so not too worried about it so far now they're going to get on it as the rocks start to move pretty good on them so they're trying to hard to hold that line and just didn't quite get on that soon enough as they could have probably held that line as they just touched it but now they got a kiss off allowing for a little maybe hit and roll action or they might just choose to draw straight in there to make sure that they get to top button that looks yeah. like what the call is so they're going to go to the draw and Look to Alina to see if she can put one in there and get one hidden to see if they can generate multiple scoring end. Oh, that was a mistake. It looks like uh, Sylvana still had one rock to throw here yet, so caught them even off guard. They're confusing me as well. Turns only with her final stone here. Savannah this, with uh, her final third, thro third stone throw. Girls are giving the sign that it's a little deep on this one. So they're just going to watch this. And Penny's going to jump in there. She can start sweeping at that T line. But she d is, and she got that to move out. So now an opportunity for Penny to draw in and sit two here and put some pressure on uh, the reigning world champion. As you can hear by the background, there's quite a few games going on. Lots of action happening here at the Swift Current Curling Club. We're just so happy to have Sastel Curling Stadium and CBC Gym being able to host such great action right out of Swift Current here. Denny Barker looking for the come around and the sweepers are really not touching this one either. All right, great shot right to the button. So Tiranzoni is gonna ask for Alina to see what she can do with this. There's a couple options. She can draw down and try to just do a baby tap on that one. And that's what she's decided to do. So she had a good look at the line last time. So she'll be able to follow this one down.
ride. She's got a good look at this one. So, little intern draw. And a beautiful little move there to get the little tap back and hard to see if she shot rock we're gonna look at that don't think she quite got the shot rock but she'll have that opportunity so penny's gonna come in there and make sure she covers that uh spot up some good action to the middle of the rink here to start our action that's for sure So Penny Barker without last rock, her final stone here in this opening end. All right, we got a draw behind. It's coming down. This is going to tap this, and now we're definitely going to see that at shot rock for Tiranzoni. I'm not sure she's going to be able to find a way in there to get her second point. So. No doubt who's got shot rock now, though. Are they looking at perhaps the slash? You might be able to kill all three reds and then that uh, yellow at the back. All right, having a good discussion point. here, trying to figure out if they can generate another one on the angle there to make that double, but... Right now, it's looking like this is just going to be a single point, but uh, they're definitely looking at this to see if they can get all the rocks moving and maybe bring that back one in the back 12 to count for the second point. So looking at the different angles. Looks pretty protected right now, though, for sure. This is one of those sometimes that we look and try for that wishful thinking. Yeah, but, whether uh, they're going to give this a go. They don't think they can hurt themselves by trying this. So they're going to try to hit that inside and see if they can get everything moving and perform some magic. So if this one works and if they score a multiple end here, we're definitely going to make sure we hit the record and have this as a big highlight reel because this is going to be one of those shots that uh, you just don't get to see very often. The Pats with her final stone here in the opening end. Curl, so let's see. Yeah, they're going to catch a piece, shoot triple. it across, and yes, not going to change anything. So one point in the first end. We'll be back right after commercial with Tiranzoni up one over Penny Barker. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. There is me. We were both going over each other on the YouTube channel, so that was a disaster. But on the CBC feed, it was just me talking. And I couldn't hear you at all that end. So a few Half technical end. issues there. We think we've got those worked out now. Second end just about to get underway.
Terenzoni picking up the single point in the opening end of play, now throwing the center guard. Get us started here in the second. Kenny Barker will look to come around that. So we've managed to see lots of rocks in play in that first end and it looks like we're going to get an interesting end going here as the first rock was out front and Penny choosing to come right in behind and now we're going to see a little bit of a rearranging or setting up of the stones to see if they can set up some good angles here for multiple scores and possible steal action so they're going to do the intern draw to top of the four and see if they get that frozen on to the Barker stone. Trying to get it to curl over just at the end here and looks like it's a little heavier than they expected so they're going to just tap that back and actually they're going to tap that right through so going to work keeping it fairly open. Darren's only sitting one now, but it is open. Sosinski comes down, makes the hit, actually rolls past the guard and out into the open on the other side. teams here early in this second end struggling to find the line for the hit and roll rolls that one away from the guard ever so slightly and uh, doing some housekeeping maybe found something on top of the rock not wanting to see that fall onto the ice and perhaps affect the path of a stone now for the most part here from talking to the curlers they've uh, been very happy they're there's only been a couple games where they've been finding that there's been something that's caused a pick on the ice. So very happy, very nice, clean surface, uh, clean rink. Uh, so yeah, they. Uh, but anytime you see anything, you definitely want to get rid of it because the worst thing is to, to lose those stones to a, a dreaded pick. Another roll. Well past the guard. Now it's deep enough in the house that uh, Tiranzoni's just going to look to hit and stay right there. If she tried to roll behind the guard, she'd probably be out of the house. Hard trying to hold this line out there, and it's just going to overcurl and another roll out. So gives the opportunity to Penny to drive one in here and try to get to that top four hidden position. sweep on this so the feel they need to get there for weight and sounds like they need it for line two so they're going to work this as hard as they can and see if they can get this in for at least a biter if not further so they're going to finish this up the best they can trying to get it to curl as well and she get that about uh quarter quarter hidden behind that so lots of room to get behind there so savannah is going to rip down and Make sure she uh, makes no mistake here and makes good contact and probably just a little rollover. 
important here to try to hold the shooter, though. Doesn't want to uh, give the Barker team another chance to make that draw, put it in there a little bit better. No, absolutely. She's going to want to roll over to the open side there, like she gestured, and uh, that forces for a, a precise hit and roll if they're going to get hidden. So want to keep this as open as possible. Nice, beautiful slide and release, and something that the curling world's become accustomed to, to seeing Savannah throw, and just so solid of a, a, a thrower, and, and very few misses we're going to see. And here again, just a beautiful shot down there, easy sweep, and got the big, nice hit and roll. So another solid shot. Getting that roll so far from the guard, it looks like Penny Barker content to stay at the edge of the sheet for now. It would be a long roll to get under cover, and if you only got halfway there, you might hand the opportunity right back to uh, Terenzoni. Yeah, Penny showing good patience here and knowing when she has to force the issue and not, and, and this is one of those situations to, to hit the standard standard no shot but again just having a little trouble figuring out where to put that broom or could be a slight release issue and so the girls are going to have to figure that out to to make sure that they they make those shots and now this is allows uh, alina to to get her rock hidden behind the center so no it looks like savannah is still up sorry miscount on the rocks but savannah is going to see if she can get this buried behind the top four and put some pressure on penny We have seen both teams struggle a little bit here early in this game to uh, find the line for the hits and rolls. One thing about these uh, competitions, typically going into a competition like this, the rocks are conditioned before you go in. And by the time you reach Sunday, perhaps that they're straining out just a little bit and they maybe need to tighten up the broom. You That's a very good already. point, Sean. We, we saw a little bit of that last night in... Uh in the qualifier games and uh, they did paper the rocks on on the Monday before the event and the teams did get to practice so they were using those rocks as well so they've got a lot of wear on them so it's definitely a, a, a chance that some of them are straightening out a little bit so they'll have to be aware of that when they're they're icing for sure still plenty of curl you can see that one buried nicely but uh, yeah it can be an issue when you're trying to get that very precise hit and roll at uh Half an inch difference of curl is huge. Absolutely, they see it even more with the hits that they uh, definitely hold the line. Uh, we, we've been seeing the, the misses even last night that uh, most of the misses have been just a touch wide and they, they keep trying to get the curl up, but uh, just straightening out just a tad, but there's still beautiful curl. Uh, no funny places in the ice. The, the girls have been loving the ice conditions. Jason Broughton and his crew have done a wonderful job and especially at a club level to have such great ice to play on is, is uh, such a treat and I've talked to lots of the teams and uh, they're just nothing but great things to say about ice conditions and uh, their whole time here in Swift Current Saskatchewan. Christy Gamble pulls her stone around into the top of the eight foot. It is shot rock, but about half open. Lena Pets making her way down to the hacks, going to make a play on this stone. Try to hold the shooter on the corner. look by Alina coming out of there the focus is pretty unreal on uh, these girls and when they go through this one's moving a little early on them yeah they picked up the brush right something, out of her hand something all over the guard yes yeah, so I think something by the way that looked and reacted early might have grabbed early because that uh, that really took off in a spot that doesn't really take off that fast so yeah, it looks like they're cleaning up the ice behind there so might have grabbed something there just after I, of course, I might have jinxed that a little bit, talking about the, 
the lack of the amount of picks that are out here, but uh, looks like that possibly grabs something. So that just definitely changed around the scenario here for the girls. Does force a decision for Penny Barker. Do you try to come around the guard? That was her first thought. Or you could just draw open side. It doesn't look likely that you're going to pick up three here. The, the stone that's currently shot rock is open. So if you do bury this one nicely, Alina Pets will have a shot to cut you down to, to one. The, the concern about coming around this corner guard is if you line up the yellow-red onto the one you're about to throw, you could leave her a chance to get both of them. Yeah, in this situation, the concentration is just where can we put this rock to avoid the possible double because it's sitting really good to get your two points right back here. So we'll see if Penny can find that magic spot here with her draw. Early on, they like the weights. They're going to just do a light little sweep on this, so not too worried about the weight right now. It's just more about the line, and now they're going to try to hold the line. I think it might a little have been the fact they off. felt it was strong, so played for the little bit of a rub. Comes out past the guard, does do the job in that they're sitting two. Well, this brings in an interesting situation here, yeah, Sean, because they, they try can... Try the double, it's very thin. Yeah, they can see half of that stone, so they can see enough of it to make the double, but high risk, because if you ever came up and clipped yours, all of a sudden that's a, a three-ender, so they'll probably take the, the high percentage shot here and just make sure they take out that short run and take out the red rocks there and, and give Penny probably a draw for their second point, but... Had Penny not moved that stone over, this this uh, little run might have been able to make a run double. And I think, and again, we don't have mics on the player, so it's hard to know for sure. But the way she's gesturing, I think Alina Pet's wondering if they can't still make the run double. Tougher now, you'd, you'd lose the raised stone. And I don't think they feel like they can get shot rock with the run. So they're going to play the hit on the open one, try to roll behind the guard, see if they can't get shot rock that way. And at least force Penny Barker to have to come after it. Yeah, definitely the higher percentage shot playing this one here. A couple opportunities to roll over, so... Not touching it early, so here we go now. So, sounds like the line's coming pretty close where they want it to be. By the front one. Nice little roll. Hit. Looking for the rolling behind both of those stones at the center. And we'll catch it, maybe a nibble of the button open in the port, but it is going to be tough to go after. This is a situation right back, Sean, that uh, it's sitting there. It looks wide open, but it's it's not because it's going to be curling either way in there, and yeah. it brings the risk of ticking their top red one, which is just edge on edge with that one, and that would be well, it would give up a steal of two if that happens. So yeah, Penny's going to have to have a really good look at this to Make sure where comfort level is. I don't think there's any way to go after it without throwing some weight. There's no way to throw a, a gentle one in there. No, the gentle would curl up too much at the end and uh, very hard for her to hold on to it at the end. So she's deciding to go with the outturn. And there's also that opportunity that they could have looked at just hitting that uh, front yellow one right on the nose and uh, run back but in the second end you don't want to have to hit those kind of shots to, to generate your deuce so yeah that's a little little dangerous there too absolutely now the stagger on those guards does make the uh, outturn look a little bit more natural the issue will be that she's coming across that stone and has to try not to curl too much at the end or she could roll out First things first, see if we can negotiate the port. Rusher's staying close early now. They've been called on. Has to get by the long guard. Not going to get by the front one. 
So Alina Pets with a nice hit and roll on her final stone to the edge of the button. Picks up the steal here in this second inch. She'll take a 2-0 lead into the third. Welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. It was only my voice. And Welcome back. Sean Joyce, Jeff Chambers with you here from the RBC Dominion Security Western Showdown. Thank you for bearing with us. We've been struggling with a few technical difficulties this morning. But, uh, it's not affecting the play on the ice. The players having a great game. Penny Barker, their final stone just over curling clip the guard. So it's a steal of one. Silvana turns on to the 2-0 lead as we begin play here in the third. And looking for the first stone into the rings. Penny Barker now will ask Danielle Sosinski to throw the corner guard. Yeah, they're going to see if they can get things set up. Last end, uh, Penny had a few opportunities to to generate after uh, a miss by the other team with a pick and just couldn't get the rock in the right spot. And then Alina with a beautiful hit and roll to, to hide one in there on them. So... Penny will re recharge here and, and see if she can get the corner established, which she did, and see if she can generate an opportunity to see if she can bounce back with a nice uh, deuce here. This is our first opportunity so far in this game to see play to the corners, but uh, having done a number of other games over the weekend, there's certainly lots of movement to the corners, and we've seen some high scores. Teams have been able to generate some big points. Pirenzoni, I believe, was looking for the tap back there. Had the weight, didn't get the line to tap the stone back, but does sit two. Well, this is showing some nice aggressiveness from Penny. Uh, it's pretty hard when you, you see a couple of yellow rocks and they're sitting in front of the tee line and they're wide open and not to, to take shots at that. Typically at the club level, you're, you're every time you get a chance to rip at a double, you're doing it, but... Penny showing that, that she's going to use her corner to her advantage and she wants to get one buried here and see if she can generate some offense. This is uh, looks like another plan B where they're playing to get the rub to try to get in behind. And just slides by and by doing that stays in the open. This is just the fifth stone of the end. They do have to be a little bit careful. If you clip the guard coming by, it would go back into place. This is a, a tight port. They're going to throw some quieter weight at it, but they'd like to remove that red stone. The second is Carol Howard. Gently through the back, and rolls her shooter in partly behind her own stone at the top of the eight. But now, Penny Barker's going to have to start moving those yellows around a bit. 
Yes, yeah, gonna have to reposition those. Those are sitting very good for Kieran Zoni. So, and he's gonna see if she can move around and get her red rocks in front and, and get those yellow rocks out of there. Jenna Ng. Another plan B there. They're just having trouble finding that uh, finding that broom. So might have to tighten up here. Could be fatigue. Uh, it's been a lot of games in a, in a short period of time, and especially this early in the season. So gonna see if they can get their their footing there to see if they can get to, on that broom because it's just a few misses with hit and rolls, and they're gonna want to definitely get their rocks into the right spot here to put some pressure back on the tier and zoni rink. Does have to go quite a bit wider to play this hit. On to some ice they may not have seen yet. Will make the hit and does hang the shooter on the edge of the 12 foot. So it's Tiran's only sitting three for the time being. Nothing under cover. There is the one corner guard belonging to Penny Barker, and they're going to look to try to hit and roll behind that. they can get that finally get that hit and roll they're looking for but they're not going to they're going to come up to the nose and leave it wide open here for Silvana to see if she can just basically replace this what do you think Jeff is she trying a little bit broomside or would she ever try to roll behind the guard here? No, sure. Her indication, uh, if this goes to plan B, she's just going to simply roll right onto the center line. So just trying to make that roll back behind the corner for Penny Barker a little harder. Yes, she just wanted this to, she, where she indicated was just a, a broom width over, just right to the center line. Just exactly where she tapped, so. Leaves the opportunity for the hit and roll, but uh, you still have to be precise on that, so. Penny's asking Christy here to throw a solid one down there, and there's, they might play around with the weight a little bit to see if they can figure out how to get that line in the roll, so. See if Christy can find that uh, secret ingredient there to, to get that nice hit and roll. Jumped this early on there, Sean. So it's either move. It must be moving on them pretty good. Now they're backing off, and now they want it to curl. So changing, awesome. uh, oh, changing shots a little bit. But look at this. Uh, they just missed the perfect roll. Got edge on edge though, but just a little miscommunication there in the in the house there on the line that they needed, and was so close. Probably about a quarter of an inch from getting that uh, the big roll in there to be completely hidden. So very close shot. So Tyrion's only in the hacks now. We'll look to hit and roll back to that center line. All she's worried about here is uh, trying to roll to a position where it makes that roll back behind cover as difficult as she can. You know, if you roll too far, Penny Barker will just try to draw, so has to make sure she holds this in the forefoot somewhere. Actually, look, looks like they played for the nose hit all the way. And, of course, that's high enough in the rings now that uh, Penny Barker made the hit and roll off that. She wouldn't be shot rock. Well, they've got to go to another plan here. So now they're going to try to, to group it over and maybe make the possible double over on the side. But more importantly, just get their shooter over and 
In a perfect world I think Penny would just love to see this rock just cornered onto that yellow stone. Got on this early. Trying to hold the line the best they can. Both going hard all the way. So you got some roll. Is it enough? You're going to work this over and nice fine shot. Just didn't quite get all the way over, but solid all the same. It is shot rocks, so when the pet's making her way down, is going to have to make a play on this stone. She'll likely look to hit this one right on the nose, and then Penny Barker, I think, with a hit and roll over, could probably get shot rock behind the guard. This one's going to be a little bit higher, but we'll see where it comes to rest. Solid rock right down there. Got the nose. Looking at the options, if you hit the high one and try to roll behind the corner, yeah, maybe you can't get shot rock on that. It might be too high. You could hit the uh, shot rock and rolling behind the one that was just thrown, but that would make for a short run. Yeah, not a lot of great options here. and. They're having a really good discussion, and just like you had mentioned there, Sean, they're looking at where do they want to put this, and those are the two options they have. It's just uh, which one would be, be better and which one would be easier to pull off at this point, because you definitely want, you need to get your either shot rock or second shot for this to give yourself any chance to, to score a multiple end. Yeah, and I think you need to make sure that stone at the top of the eight foot is gone just to make sure you've got a clear path for your final stone you want to make sure you have a shot to score penny looked like she was lining it up there can we make the the double and the roll but i think you'd have to hit the first one thin enough that uh, you're probably losing your shooter if you play that yeah i'd have to agree i think they're just coming down there so plan a will be just to get that roll so behind the corner the stone. sorry go ahead sean yeah, no, I think just looking to play the hit and roll in behind the corner and may not be able to get shot rock. But even if your second rock shot buried, it uh, creates a problem for Alina Pets. Picking up the brush early on this one definitely would like to roll here this is really curling hard across that center line makes the hit and actually rolls in front of the Yellowstone and that still makes that rock difficult to remove so Alina Pet's gonna have to play the draw yeah again just the girls are just having trouble finding their uh, their line and just uh, not getting the rocks where they want to, but this is uh, not bad as as far as well. I, I mean, you're allowing Hirnzoni to split the house, but if there was ever a miss, that's a short run back to her two red ones. So the girls, Hirnzoni's uh, rink here, and as Alina throws, they're going to make sure they keep this path very nice and clean so that they can, got to make sure that they get in for second rock here. to make sure they get this deep enough. If you leave this high in the house, you might leave a double off of it for two as well. Absolutely. It wants to be T-line here. Looks like a straightforward shot, but you have to be very precise with this. So communication is going to be great between the girls and they have an exact place they want this to end up. does come to rest back four no double there 
Penny Barker just going to follow it down, try to get her single point with the draw. Final stone here in the third end, trailing two nothing. Facing two, needing full forefoot with her final stone to pick up the single point. Solid sweep, start to finish here. So they're going to work all the way it. down. Yeah. to wait a little bit for the line and uh, I'm not sure they got that far enough it's close I do think it is one red well, yeah, my first gut is looks like a red one but they're going to call in a measurement by the looks of it so Christy it's, Gamble is off close. on a run really to close. go find that uh, measuring stick typically what we'll see in measuring situations is the thirds will be involved so that there's not too many people surrounding the house. So one person from each team will have a look and do the measurement. Typically at the other events that they'll see when they go into the world in the provincial events is, is uh, they have officials to do that. But uh, here at these events, the players do it themselves and it's typically the thirds. So Christy was off to find it. And of course, it's at the other end. So she's making her way down. And as is always the case, whenever you need to do a measurement on a, whenever you need to do a measurement on a TV sheet, the uh, measuring stick's always at the other end of the rink. Absolutely. Christy making her way down, and so she's going to do the measurement. And not sure who will step in. Looks like Sylvana will be taking a good look to make sure that they're happy with, make sure it's inserted into the center pin correctly, and then she'll oversee where the measurement goes. So Sylvan is going to take over here. In this situation, you just want it to be touching the stone because you don't want to put any kind of pressure on it and accidentally move that stone. And this is a little different. Normally we see it in a clockwise position, but they're going to go with counterclockwise. Yeah. So changing things up. Christy wants a second look. This must be pretty close, Sean, if they're taking a second look at it. And now they're going to go around in the clockwise position, which is more typical for measurements. And they want to do it at a nice steady pace. Well, it is close. It is very close if they're taking a second look. And it's actually yellow. So yellow with another steel. So we believe it's a steal of one there for Terran Zoni, and uh, they will jump out to a 3 nothing lead here after three ends of play. Penny Barker will have last rock. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you, and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Voice from before somehow. Fourth in, just underway. The steal of one for Tiran's only after the measurement gives her the three nothing lead, and they'll call for the first stone into the top of the house. Penny Bark, needing to generate some points here, will ask for the corner guard.
Corner guard made. Turns only asking for another stone to the top of the house now. And we'll have a, a decision to be made by Penny Barker. She's probably already made that decision, but we've seen teams play this a number of different ways, whether they'll throw the second corner guard. She might come around. Sean, do you think there's a typical magic number there for when teams decide whether they want to come around that single guard or throw up the double guard out there? In this case, I guess uh, three isn't the magic number, but... Oh, they are choosing to go for it, actually. Oh, it might be the fact that uh, those two stones are in the forefoot. You know, you got to deal with them at some time. This is a chance to do it here early in the end. And we are still early, just the fourth end. Eight end games here in play at the RBC Dominion's Western Showdown. Makes the hit jams. The first stone does uh, move it to the other side of the forefoot. So it continues to be turns only sitting one. They'll bring another one in. Just the one guard out front, the corner guard, belonging to Penny Barker. Darren Zone would like to keep the play away from that. Penny's finally, she's going to look at uh, the first indication was going for a hit and roll off that one, so... They haven't been able to hide their rocks yet. They've been uh, constantly chasing, so hopefully they can generate some offense by getting a nice little hit and roll behind that corner guard that's sitting in such a nice spot there. Once again, just trying to, having trouble finding that line for the hit and rolls and got onto the nose, so. Just the nose hit again and it gives, uh, turns only a chance to make a play on that stone. They're not looking for the roll behind the guard. guard. They again, want to keep the play away from that center guard, or pardon me, corner guard as long as they can. Do want to keep the shooter in play though this is curling on them a little bit it does stay right there very similar situation to just the last end trying to get the same kind of role so very similar setups now they're one good hit and roll away from uh, perhaps sitting up a deuce but that has been the trouble and really both teams win it them down to needing to get precise rolls haven't been able to find the line yet so they're asking for it to curl up a little bit so it's hitting a little thin right now and again just struggling with those lines just too many little misses to set up the aggression and now that gives the opportunity for for Silvana to be able to peel off that front and uh, it'll be wide open and nothing to hide behind Nothing to hide behind, and, and uh, on top of that, by not even removing one of those yellow stones on the last one, you could be looking at a force. Had she at least removed one rock when she rolled out of play, the blank would be alive.
makes the peel and does roll across the top of the house without touching any of her own stones. So Kieran's only continuing to sit two. Benny Barker, nothing to hide behind. Thinking about the freeze. for a quieter hit on I believe going after the the hit and roll towards the one on the 12 foot don't think this was a double Certainly with that weight looks like they're just looking for the hit and roll rushes have been on this most of the way down and again they're going to have another over curl Gets right up to the nose. At one time there, Penny was looking at a possible freeze to try to generate something and decide to go with a little bit of the safer shot and, and keep it somewhat open still. There's a chance at that possible blank. I know there is two rocks in play already, but they're only one double away from clearing that up. So team decided with a few rocks to play that they would play it a little safer and see if they could generate that uh, double along the way. Kieran Zoni now trying to roll to the other side of the center line not to uh, leave a double. And they're on this one early as well. This might come up to the nose. Well, it's a thin double, but if you want to play it, this might be your chance to try to get out of the end. Or do you just hit and roll? Yeah, well, they have both opportunities here, so... This might be one of those that they throw it down there and decide if they want to go plan A or plan B as the stone's released. <laughs> I think if you're playing the hit and roll, you're probably playing it too quiet to make the double. Well, with this weight, it looks like they're going for the hit and roll and they're on it early, which means it's moving yeah, up it towards like the, the nose. Roll. A little roll out of it, not quite as much as they like. But... Would have liked probably another rocks width, then it would be hard for Alina Pets to roll away from that situation, and you'd have a straight back double for your next one. probably going to have some kind of a slash available decision she'll have to make if Alina Pets hits this right on the nose Penny Barker will have a choice she could play the slash double or she could play the hit on the back one and try to roll behind the stone that's about to to come to rest here when it hits well I don't think a nose hits it in play this took oh. off again and that is the same stone that she had trouble with last end now they wondered if it didn't pick then yeah, they're checking the ice conditions, but you know what, they're going to... that particular stone. You might want to look at that, yeah, if there's a some sort of rough edge under there that's just grabbing something. So I definitely know if I was Alina, I'd be checking that bottom of that stone really well to make sure there's nothing there. Because, yeah, we haven't seen too many picks out here on this ice, and, and nor do we normally. And so, yeah, they're going to definitely want to take a good look at that. Now she's looking over that dot. She's going to have a good look at it right now and see if there's anything out of the ordinary on there. Well, that was a pretty quick look there. I, would, I think I would have spent a little more time checking the surface of that rock. Well, it certainly swings the momentum in a big hurry in this fourth end. Penny Barker was looking at being forced and now suddenly has a chance to split the house and try to pick up her deuce here in the fourth end and get this game a little closer. Just needs to be deep enough with this one so that she doesn't allow an opportunity for the double. Does sit too. Too flat to play a double. 
in the pets. I think what they're looking at, if they hit this on the nose, would they be shot rock? And if they could get shot rock with a nose hit, Penny Barker wouldn't be able to hit it on the nose again. She'd have to play for a bit of a role. You see Danielle taking the extra time to come all the way down the ice, so as if they haven't had to do enough sweeping in the last few days, but she's going to make sure that it's a nice clean surface for this rock. So just tremendous shape that uh, all these athletes are in uh, with the amount of sweeping and, and body stress it takes it to constantly do all this sweeping. It's, it's pretty amazing what they do. Nothing out of the brushers on this one. She makes the hit, but uh, needed to roll just a little bit to the inside to get shot rock. It is Penny Barker sitting shot rock right now and a chance to draw. She'll need full eight foot to pick up her second point. Oh, one little miscue here from the Tiranzoni team. Penny Barker with a chance to capitalize and pick up the first deuce of this game. Yes, things can change so quickly. Be patient and uh, you never know what happens. And she's taking advantage of this and hopefully can throw a nice solid throw here and, and pick up her, her deuce to, to start the battle back. Final stone from Penny Barker on the way. Needs full eight foot for her deuce. Just cleaning it in, it will come to rest. On the edge of the button, she does pick up her two points. Penny Barker on the board with two in the fourth. Tiernzoni continues to lead three to two. Sastel Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. That's the question about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it. It's all free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house look. Welcome back everyone. Fifth then just underway, we thank you all all for bearing with us understand we've been having some technical issues with our audio this morning but uh, we'll do the best we can Penny Barker doing the best she can picked up a deuce in the fourth end to close within 3-2 looking for the center guard here and they've got that Tiran's only with a one-point lead in last rock as we begin play here in the uh, fifth end asking for the stone into the corner of the 12 foot comes to rest, biting back eight foot. Penny looking for the hit and roll here from Lee Danielle Sosinski. Asking this to curl a little bit, it's just hanging out there on them a little bit. Or maybe a lot, so just an unfortunate miss there. Just got it started outside and just couldn't get that back in. So 
chance now for Tiernan's only to split the house. I actually thought she might play this to the same side because it, it will be in the way when they try to peel the guard later on. One of the two of them will be anyway. Turns only sitting two. Jenna Engie going to make a play on uh, the stone that was just delivered. Makes the hit rolls towards that center guard, but uh, just fully open yet. Howard looking to make the play on that stone. Didn't see the indication, but I would think they want to roll away from the center guard. They do want to hold the shooter, however. They definitely rolled Gotta away, hit, but, but a little too thin and rolled out on that one. So opportunity for Penny to clean up house a little bit and get rid of the other yellow one and see if she can get a little bit of roll over towards that uh, center guard. Even though it'll be at back at the house, it's still be nice to have that red rock back there. This time makes the hit and rolls in behind cover. It is behind the T-line. Tears only wants nothing to do with playing the house on the center line. The fifth end going to peel the center guard. So now just the one stone in play. That stone belonging to Penny Parker. Back of the eight foot. She's going to look to guard that. Fantastic shot there to cover that shot stone up with a nice tight guard. So Sylvana wasting no time putting the broom down and zipping down to the other end. She's just going to have to peel off that front guard. She just does not like that spot for that rock to be there. See Penny want to replace this rock right away. Ask for the same shot down there.
while this rock comes to the rest i can give a little bit update on the other games that are going on uh, over on the other sheets in the qualifier matches this morning we have grandy up two to one over peterson they are in the fifth we have ackland up two nothing over yoshimira and that's also in the fifth and the other game also in the fifth so everybody at the same time we have team jim over constantini two to one so a lot of close tight games here uh for action uh, as we enter into the second half of all the games of the, from the qualifiers so some great action left today Apologies, uh, audio difficulties continue. I think I'm back with you now. Turn the pets with the double. Or pardon me, Sylvana turns only with the double on her final stone of this end. Just the one stone in the house now belonging to Tiranzoni. Penny Barker will have to make a play on it. Yeah, that was a terrific double to bounce back there. And Penny was trying to maneuver her stones around to avoid that, but uh, just came a little too deep and give that opportunity. And Savannah and her team wasted no time trying to get rid of the, both those rocks. So now we're going to go back and forth and try to basically replace rocks here. And we're going to probably see a great attempt at a blanked end by the end of this. As Tiranzoni would love to probably, in this situation, retain Hammer going into the even sixth end. She will have to roll a little bit on this one just to make sure she's got a bite of the 12 foot. If you hit that right on the nose, Penny Barker will come around it. Pets with her first stone here in the fifth end. And to make the hit, would like to get the shooter into the rings. And it does look like she's got a bite. I think it's close. Yeah, it's very close, but... Uh, Penny Barker thinking it might be out. Yeah, Penny's thinking it will come around, even if it is biting. But yeah, if it's it's biting, you'd think you'd try to hit nose and stay there for a possible guard. But uh, she's going to take the aggression and try to tuck this, around this that. This is Penny's last. This is Penny's last. If she's going to oh, hit it, she's going to hit and roll in. But uh, True, she must see that outside. So let's see if she can hide that. Come around. As long as you bury, even if it is a biter, the... The run back won't hurt you. She's got to bury this. Now the other thing is, if you think it's out, you, you can't really flirt with it coming by because if you ever touch it, you could put it in. Penny Barker with her final stone here in the fifth end, trailing by one, looking to see if she can't uh, at least get a force here, try to bury this in the four-foot area, and perhaps get a steal. Coming around a stone that's just outside the edge of the 12-foot. Plenty of room by that front stone. They're okay if this goes deep. They'd like to get a force. Comes to rest back eight foot. Now it really matters whether you think that first that stone at the top is in or not. You can make a play directly on the back one. If they well, thought they were in at the front, if they could see them take more ice, play it quiet, or try to stay with that broom, I have to think they're playing for the blank here. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. They looked at it over top a little bit, but didn't take a lot of time. So I believe both teams think this is the front one is out. So this will be just a hit and roll out blank attempt. We might see the biter stick come out regardless. 
Let's. They're going to ask first. They almost kicked that off. Did you see that? Final still makes the hit. Yeah. We'll see if they're going to kick that off. And so we got a blank end. So the score remains 3-2 to two for Tiranzoni after five ends of play. Penny Barker will be looking for the steal when we come back for the sixth. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport and the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Back up and, uh, yeah, no, so. Right, back in action in the sixth end here. We had a blank end, so Piranzoni remains with the hammer coming to the even sixth end. Then he put a nice, uh, called for a nice tight guard out front, and now they're going to take action behind. Just getting a little update on the other games that are going. A lot of tight, tight matches out there. So some great curling, being able to be watched by everybody here in Swift Current and all the travelers that decide to come to Swift Current to check out the action. And we also welcome everybody out there, thanks to the Sastel Curling Stadium and CBC coverage for being able to watch some great curling right here in Swift Current, Saskatchewan from all around the world. So just fantastic to have this opportunity. Right, attempt at the draw around freeze there, but just comes up a little bit short. But still, rocks in great place. Very usable being right out front. Here's is going to call for the the come around on the wide side. Sweepers are on this. They like the weight. Alina's calling out that it's pretty good. So they're going to brush this up. Catching the late curl. They want this to curl a little bit more. Nice solid shot, but definitely showing a lot, big piece of that. So Penny will probably come down and try to bump that around and reposition them. Just depends on the type of weight she wants to throw on that. Looks like we're just going to throw hack and See if she can get to the nose and just bounce it back and see if she can create some kind of wall there to make it difficult to get her red stone taken out. Aaron Zone is putting three, and he let me make a play on the stone at the top of the eight, but I don't know that they're looking for the roll under cover or the double here. I actually just called for hack there, Sean. I know you had some technical difficulties there, and we just got you back, but they are just calling with the hack weight, trying to bump that yellow back and create kind of a wall. So just wanted to move things around to make it a little, a little different, and uh, mission accomplished. They definitely moved it around, maybe a touch more weight than they're expecting, but good shot get theirs in play in front of that t-line
And that was the fifth rock of the end, so now Tyrion's only has the option to start moving those guards, and I think she'd like to see that center line clean a little bit. Looks like the double peel attempt here, and if you hit this right, uh, it could come back and, and clip that stone at the top of the eight foot as well. Lots of movement there. Had lots of rocks in play, just like you had mentioned. And so all clean out front. Just the two rocks in the house remaining. So Penny's going to say, I'd like to guard that up, that one in the full eight. It's not shot rock, but if she can protect that, it's in a great spot. And uh, she wants that to remain there for as long as possible. Shot stone is the uh, yellow stone belonging to Tiranzoni at the back of the eight foot. Benny Barker looking to protect second shot right now. Yes, this game of curling is a, is a lot about patience. It's it's uh, not always going after shot rock, but uh, a lot of times if you can control that second or even third rock in the house, uh, you always set up the ability to uh, to generate some offense and and uh you just hope that you get an opportunity to get at that shot rock as rocks come down but uh sometimes you got to be patient and and just wait for your opportunities that's exactly what penny's doing so great job so far and Tiranzoni did not want any part of that guard so she called for nope. to take that out and now penny will want to replace that and We talk about this from time to time in, in the broadcasts. This can come down to an issue of timing. It's Penny Barker is protecting second shot, and she will continue to do that for a while. Terrence only will continue to peel the guards. There comes a point in time, though, where Penny Barker has to make a decision. Do we hit that back stone and, and uh, try to play for the force? When you do that, you're going to leave a double and perhaps a chance for the blank. You don't want to do it too early. If you do it too late, Tears only might just decide to come around and take two here. So a little bit of game of cat and mouse is always fun to watch. Absolutely. It's a first. beautiful game. There's a lot of gambling involved. So Savannah is not taking any chances. She she can see half of that stone, but she would come have to come down with some pretty light finesse weight, and uh, the jam possibility is too too big. So she just decided that she's going to peel this, even though it's a pretty high guard. She's going to peel that and and keep a nice open look for now. does make the peel on the guard. This might be the shot where Penny Barker has to make a decision. If you throw one more guard, does Sylvana Tiran's only come around on the next one? That's what Penny's thinking. So we're going to hit the one at the back now. For a lot of teams, that would be the decision point is, you know, you've got three rocks left to the other teams too. We're going to come around. Penny Barker knows that. Doesn't want to give up two here, wants to play for the force. Needs a bit of a roll to the outside to make the double difficult. But has to hold the shooter. Oh, that's nicely done. That's a beautiful shot there. So sets up the chance for the double, but uh, every time you're, you have that kind of separation, uh, that's definitely not an automatic for sure. She's going to have to really throw a good stone to be able to get this. And Alina's lining up that angle to, to have a good look at it. So they'll give this a good go. And Penny will sit back and hope that she has an opportunity to apply some more pressure. Well, yeah, it's the angle that makes this one so difficult. You've, you've pretty much got to commit to losing your shooter here. And if you don't get the double, Penny Barker will split the house and, and she'll have her force. No way to make this double without losing the shooter. 
Loop call's been close. Makes contact and does spin it out the back. Shooter goes as well. There's that one Yellowstone just with a piece of the back line still in play. And that'll be all that Penny Barker has to use. She'll try to draw in front of it somewhere. Hard to tell from the overhead camera angle if if you dead jammed on that stone, it might still be out of the rings. Then he's decided to go wide here, try to put it in a, a new piece of the ice that they might not have had much of a look. Anytime you get it out that wide, it uh, brings the possibilities of, of possible misses. So she's gonna try to find a little bit of a open hiding spot over there. and. Rushers picked this up early. Backing away a little bit now. Well, I think that surprised the sweepers a little bit. I think the way they were sweeping, they thought that was right on the tee line, but slid to the back without... Uh, any problem, but I, you might see that back rock come into play now, Sean. Yeah, I, I think that's where they were trying to put it. Uh, get in the neighborhood of the back stone. And again, I'm not sure. I think if they hit it and dead jammed it, it's probably out of the rings. But uh, if you ever got just a little bit past the nose, or jammed it uh, to the in center line side of that rock, it might roll into the back of the 12. hesitation from Alita Pets in the hack so it, it does appear that it at least puts something into her head for Penny Barker that's really all you can do in this situation is, is uh, force them to, to think a little bit maybe make them uncomfortable throwing this shot you need just a little bit of a miscue here and Alita Pets hasn't given them much so far she's had a couple of rocks pick on her though The hit does jam it. It stays out of the rings. So this Tieran's only sitting one right now. Now if uh, I think they spill just a little bit farther out too. So even if Penny's able to roll in front of that, again, I think a jam would be out of the rings. Yeah, I think it got a touch closer, but yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely would have to be a perfect jam and. Uh, then still might not be enough. But first things first, make contact, sit your red rock there, and make them come at you. Solid shot by Penny there, and uh, it's a hit. Uh, now they're going to ask Alina to peel that out of there, and, and uh, we might have another back back blank end. Lena Pets with her final stone here in the sixth end, looking for the blank. She will make the hit, does roll the shooter out. We've got a blank here in the sixth. Terenzoni continues to lead by a score of three to two and she'll have last rock again in the seventh.
Welcome back, everyone. Sean Joyce, Jeff Chambers with you. Through some trying audio difficulties here from the RBC Dominion Securities. Western Showdown. C uh, uh, quarterfinal action here this Sunday morning. So we're on a Tiranzoni with a 3-2 lead as we begin play here in the seventh end. She does have last rock, Penny Barker with the center guard up, now looking to come around. Plenty of room by the guard. had to wait on the line there just a little bit and comes up I think just short of the rings now they might want to make an agreement on that because she can see half of that might decide to make a play on it and they are gonna ask for the biter stick they can't decide for sure if it's in this is the one situation in the rules that does allow for a measurement in the middle of an end you have to determine if that rock is in the rings before you know whether or not you're allowed to hit it We'll use the six foot measure. That looks to me like it's it looks outside like it of the out. rings. Yeah, so they're not going to be able to remove that from play. That means the come around for Briar Hurleman. by the high guard tight by the tight guard and uh, comes to rest nicely top of the eight foot dead buried that's a good draw nice way to start this end for the Tiranzoni team for Penny Barker though happy to have some rocks in place to either get a force or a steal here in the uh, seventh end can't not afford a blank end will come in with a wide out turn here so that they can tuck around there that's a hard rock to get around uh, seeing it is in the eight foot uh, a lot of times we'll see it just a, a corner freeze on that top yellow to leave your red rocks in front of it but penny's going to try to kind of get this at least half hidden to to make it a little harder to to remove that was interesting i don't know if you noticed that or not jeff they uh when they decided they're playing the, the come around here they've switched stones so possible that uh, Jenna Angie feels like she's got one stone that curls a little bit more when they're trying to play a come around on a stone at the top of the eight foot that's probably the rock you want hard on this one so let's see if they can hold that line and get it tucked around Last minute call off, so then change minds, keep it in front, and a little bit of a bounce off. Just got caught in between. Stone in the rings is open, but uh, the guard's a bigger concern for Tiranzoni's. Looking for the peel. Just looking to get the one guard right now. Nice light brush down, so good solid shot. Got the got the peel and removed all the rocks, so much more open look. And we'll figure out where where Penny wants to situate these rocks. Whether she wants to get another guard out front, or looks like she wants to get the action to can uh, group up in the top of the house here.
Well, there is a pocket formed between that red yellow at the top of the eight foot, so if she can sit in that pocket, this stone, well, it wouldn't be shot rock. There'd be no chance for Tiranzoni to remove it for a while. And you could at least stay out of the blank situation that way, but this might be coming up a little bit short as well. Well, being a tighter guard here, and they don't like their guards up front, uh, they might take a crack at trying to do a combination of some sort to, to, to move around a couple of the reds. And that's what she's looking at right now, which, which way she wants to, to run that or take an attempt at a double. So Lena's going to come down there and have another look at it too, because this is an opportunity to move multiple rocks at one time. Yeah, the only thing is there's a little bit of risk when you're running it, and that's what Terenzoni's looking at. If you try to run it at the rock that's in the 8-foot and you ever run it past, you could jam on that stone at the back eight and leave uh, Penny sitting two in the rings. Problem with trying to double peel with two center guards is you're probably leaving your shooter right there. So they're going to opt to peel it towards the uh, the red in the rings, I believe. I think if they were playing this, they might just be playing the straight peel, just picking over the top of everything. Oh, gonna sit. I, I think they were calling to pick it over the top of everything. Doesn't manage to get it past their own, but does roll it out of play. Yeah, the initial call was to shoot. They're trying to hit it thin and put it across the top. And she just started yeah. that as you heard the they called the sweep on right away. So she just pinched that a little bit when she let it go. And uh, unfortunately for them, they got uh, not a total jam, but uh, took their own rock out of play. So Penny will figure out how where she wants to put another one. She looks like she wants to half tuck this around that yellow. Girls are on this right from the beginning and sweeping all the way. So fatigue will be setting in here right about now. And the girls are wondering, where is that house? And there it is. So just a hair light, two more feet. And they would have had a beautifully buried rock there. Still in play, still in a great spot. And uh, definitely going to get Sylvana thinking. So they've called their shot. They know what they want to do. Looks like they're going to come off that red walk. And make a double by uh, hitting almost right in the middle of that red and yellow rock. early sweep they're looking for this to curl up they've got one and they managed to run into the other one and just knock it out into the opening leaving two of theirs in the middle behind red cover so Penny will figure out a way to access this, this is a she could go for the uh, double across the top it's quite thin but uh, I think she's gonna want to try to keep make sure that she keeps her red rocks in place so she's gonna come down and just Bump that yellow rock back. All right, just figuring out the weight here and see if they can bump back that yellow right, right through the gap there and, and uh, have three red rocks remaining close by to, to use an access. 
Just a light sweep means they're really close to the line they want. Nice solid shot. Unfortunately, they're going to use that, lose that shooter. It just hit that a little bit thin and ended up grouping their two red rocks together. So they're going to look at the angles here if there's a double or if they're just going to simply hit and roll over. So this will be a probably a fairly quick chat between Alina and Savannah to, to figure out what they want to do with this and figure out the weight because they would like to be sitting there two yellow rocks after this. Here in Zoni Rink, throwing very solid so far, showing a big reason why they're ranked number one in, in the event and, and coming into this. But Penny, even though they're ranked 100, they are, uh, it's a David Goliath story, but Penny is putting up a great battle and putting up some great shots with her team. And it's been a close one. So there we got a little jam on the red one. So this gives the opportunity for Penny to come down, hit, split the rings a little bit and sit two. Thus, probably for putting on the force, which she'd be happy. Obviously, a steal would be ideal, but in this situation, if you can force uh, the Tiranzoni rank to one, then we only have a, a two-point uh, game going down to the end, and uh, very doable, of course, in, in this curling, especially on the great ice that we're fortunate enough to play on. said it earlier in the the commentary but the ice conditions have been absolutely fantastic Jason Broughton and his crew here in Swift Current uh, can put together world-class ice uh, the Swift Current Curling Club is very fortunate to have six amazing sheets of curling ice it's a very very clean building and uh, the ice surface is is fantastic it leads for great shot making and the players can all trust it so Big reason why we see so many great shots and, and great setups of ends. We got the nose and a little moving over and she did manage to match up the rocks. They are somewhat close together, but a little bit too flat for any kind of double. So mission accomplished by, by Penny on that throw. So got a good high five and, and uh, she'll be very happy with this result. And now Lena and Savannah are figuring out where we can hit and roll a rock to as they still they they don't want to force they they still want to try to get their deuce out of this so they're going to try real hard to see what they can uh maneuver here to get the shot rock and and partially hidden with their throw here the sweepers are touching it they want this to curl so must be a touch outside of where they ideally wanted it see if they can get some kind of roll and they've got mostly a nose hit so still a good shot they still got to figure out where Penny can put this to avoid any kind of double to give up a multiple end she would love to walk away with a force so by the looks of it a, a, a little hit and roll to the slight bit outside would probably be ideal but she's looking at her angles so her last show there with her broom is just to get a little bit of an outside roll try to match those red rocks up avoid any kind of double and force uh, Tiranzoni into seeing if Alina wants to draw against two or do a hit and roll so be decision time coming up shortly but first things first Penny's got to throw a good one down here and just get a slight little roll and put some pressure on Alina for her stone, for her final stone.
All right, Penny's making sure she cleans that surface really well. They've been fortunate they haven't had any picks, but there has been a couple in this game already. Uh, Lena's had two of them, but uh, for the most part, like I've said, the uh, ice surface is very clean, so very rare to have picks, but you don't take anything for granted. You want to make sure that stone is very clear. The front end had made sure the uh, slide path was all cleaned up, and now they're going to be on this the whole way, so they're going on this hard, trying to hold that line. Usually meaning it's curling up on them, so let's see if they can hold this. And they managed to hold it, but now there's going to be an opportunity at a double opportunity, so Helena and Savannah will talk very closely here if it's worth going for the double and getting a, a two-point, which would be a huge three-point advantage going into the last end or whether they wanted to draw for one to go up by two, but they've decided that they're going to go for this double. They feel that it's a, a good percentage shot to hit half a stone here and, and uh, walk away with their two. So that's the call, and here we go. Beautiful balanced slide and release that we've come to see Alina do in so many situations. And she threw this, got the double. She's gonna roll out though, so it ends up being a single. So good contact, but going up by two. Penny Barker with the hammer going into the eighth end. Down by two, should be a great battle. We'll see you after commercial break. How Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. We're back in action in the 8th end of curling here at the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown where Swift Current's lucky enough to be hosting a lot of world women's curling teams. World number one right now, Tiranzoni rank, is up by two going into the final end of play over Penny Barker of Saskatchewan. So a great matchup so far. Penny's going to try to get up the corner guard and, and do it, whatever she can to set up a possible two or ideally three. But right now I'm pretty sure that if they can just uh, figure out a way to generate their two points and take it in an extra, I think Penny would take that right now. So they're going to throw up a corner. Looks like it's about halfway or better known as the, the zone number two. Uh, for the people that use the zone numbers, number one is just over the hog line, number two is halfway, and number three is a tight guard. So typically we'll see uh, those corner guards in the, in the middle or the number two position. And So first shot there, and now we're going to see Danielle Sazinski, or sorry, uh, Briar Hummelman try to bring this in, keep it a little clean in, in the middle. So Briar with a nice pair of rocks in there, put some pressure on Penny. Now they're seeing two yellow rocks in the house of the T-line. Penny is going to ignore those for sure for a little while and she's going to try to get around there. So a lot of times in this situation, uh, when you're needing that two, especially in the eighth end, you'll see a second corner guard. Uh, it just depends on the team's strategy and they discuss this going into the game. So they're all on the same page whether they're going to throw a second corner or come around that corner guard. So you can see the Barker team has decided they're gonna come right in and they'd like to get that rock in, inside rather than throwing the second corner. So again, everybody has their little bit different strategy to box. This one's holding on them, so they're gonna try to bump, but didn't quite get that. So had a little bit of trouble on their alignment there and 
Not sure if that was a release issue or just had too much ice, but uh, left that in the open. So Green Zone is not going to waste any time in being able to take that out. So one of those advantages of uh, maybe if they would have thrown another corner, at least they wouldn't have been able to touch that uh, that rock and had a secondary rock to play with. But That is one of the things we've seen Penny Barker's team have to do already this game, uh, play for the little rub to get in behind. Not able to do that this time, so it does leave the stone accessible for Carol Howard to try to make the hit. Turns only trying to roll that stone out of play. They don't want anything in play right now if they could avoid it. They're going to be able to start peeling car guards on the next one. Jenna Angie will look to come around that corner guard <laughs> before it gets peeled. Trying to get this to curl up a little bit. They've uh, The team has struggled with finding that line and getting it hidden. Uh, basically the whole game which is a big reason why there's only two points on the board by them they haven't been able to to kind of maneuver their rocks into the right hiding spot it seems like every time they're close they're always showing a piece of it or, or showing the rock which is uh, able to get out so that one is pretty good and buried so gets them to, to peel the corner guard here you have anything maybe just a little bit sneaking out uh, on the uh, side past the guard but Tiranzoni will look for the peel and removes the guard, but leaves the shooter as a guard on the other side. Penny Barker with something to work with now. Yellowstone at the top of the forefoot continues to be shot. Penny Barker has second at the back. Looking to perhaps make the hit and roll behind cover. Not really looking for the double. I think if you make the hit and roll in behind, you're probably jamming the top stone, but you'd sit second and third. Shot rock would be open. Yeah, in this situation, they're pretty happy. It, it might be a yellow rock out front, but it's still a guard and something to get behind and cause a little bit of grief. So uh, Penny will try real hard to get this uh, little roll underneath and... Start generating some offense and, and possibilities at a, a multi-point end. Needs to get past the nose of this stone if she's going to roll underneath. I think they had to go plan B at the end. You didn't want to hit that on the nose. The uh, double attempt probably jams on the red, so they just drive it by, stay in front of that yellow stone. That makes the, uh, the red difficult for Tiranzoni to remove. She could make a play directly on the back one. Or do you play the slash double? And I think that's what they're talking about. Well, if they stay to the strategy they've been doing so far this game, I'm going to see them go up and typically try to do that slash double. But there we go. See, they're it's... changing it up. Uh, they've been very successful on those doubles too, but they're decided to go after that shot rock yeah. and, and sit one and two. It's safer to hit the back one. And I think the other consideration is they're worried if you if you try the slash, don't make it. You've left a fairly routine hit and roll in behind. Now, not that hit and rolls have been easy today, but uh, Penny Barker makes the hit and roll behind cover off Shot Rock. Now you're in a little bit of trouble. At least she's still got to deal with Shot Stone when you do this. Makes the hit, stays right there. Tiran's only sitting two. Well, Shauna, it's looking like they're looking at making a play already on that red, yellow stone. Not sure if that's a little early to do that yet when they have the opportunity to draw around that uh, somewhat corner guard, but. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, do. I don't think she's making the play on the yellow. It looks almost like she's playing the split, just to to try to open up shot rock and the shooter would go behind cover. The only problem with trying to split it like that, you sure don't want to leave a double on the reds. I might be with you, Jeff. I might just play the straight draw. Yeah, a little bit of a gamble here, but I guess uh, we are in the eighth end and you can't hold too much back. But uh, yeah, an easier shot definitely would have been the draw around. Uh, but they're, they're going to try hard to, like you said, get that split and hopefully get partly behind that corner. Boy, really working hard on the brush to make sure she got a piece of that stone. Critical to get a piece because with that weight, had she not got a piece of the uh, stone at the top, might have been right through the back. Gets the split. It appears to be, and I think she's got second and third out of it. Second for sure at the top, I think. Third's uh, a, really close. That was a very impressive shot that worked out, and uh, creativity by Penny to try to maneuver the rocks around, and they definitely got the separation they needed. And uh, going to give themselves an opportunity here to to uh, generate some points with uh, having a couple in play now that are separated. Well, and they have a direct path to get at Shot Rock now, too. So they can play the hit and roll in behind cover on the next one. Terrence only knows that, but there's not much you can do about that right now. You you want to deal with one of these two red stones. The question is, which one do you hit? The front one is probably the one that's second shot. But you can't get your shooter to a good spot off that one. Hit the back one, you're going to be behind the T-line. But it is safer. You can certainly make it go away, roll in, and, and sit second. Yeah, I think they're looking at that percentage shot right now. As there's just a lot of risk on that top one. Um, so, yeah, they're going to take that back one, play it safe, and try to get some kind of roll over towards the middle. Ensure that they're sitting one and two. Trying to make sure that there are two rocks that Penny Barker has to deal with if she's going to bring that one at the top back in. They like the looks of it all the way down and they got the nice little hit and roll. Rolls in just enough to make sure it's second shot. Barker taking a look around the outside. I think she thinks the red is third. I think it is. She's still got two yellows she's got to deal with. First shot will be the hit and roll, and I think they're just looking to roll behind cover. Yeah, they have a couple options here, Sean. The, the hit and cover to get Shot Rock in behind a hiding place, or they could have tried to go for the double, but then that would have just left that open. So they're going to go for that hit and roll and see if they can hide one here. Hardcore yelling here, which means it's moving on them pretty good. And yeah. unfortunately got that rollout. So that's a dis um, tough one for for Team Barker there as they uh, really needed to keep that shooter around. And Penny give the sign that the, the weight was down a little bit of what she expected. So just jumped on him a little bit. Gives Tiern's only the opportunity to make a play on the lone redstone in play. That uh, rock that we believe is second shot right now, sitting at the top of the eight foot. Penny will still have the guard. She can come around with her first and try to set up the deuce she needs for the tie. With the removal of those other stones, now this is a low risk shot because they don't want to necessarily stick around. They actually will want to just roll this shooter out and, and just pop it through the middle, which they're successful doing. And now we're running out of hiding spots, so Penny will try her best to get around that uh, yellow corner. Well, you got one hiding spot. That's really all you need. <laughs> There's only three rocks left to come. If you can hide one, a 
Should give you a chance with your last one to get two. Yes, and this is a precise shot. Uh, she has to come just into more of the top four because if she comes all the way to the T line, that would leave a very easy in off off the uh, the current yellow rock there too. So it's just not as easy as just plunking it down there and putting it on the T line. They actually have to leave it a little bit ahead to avoid that. Just getting some last minute talks and making sure that they they know the weight and I don't think it's been toughening up too much so the weight should be pretty consistent and I'll just go through your routine and throw the draw that you've thrown a million times. Penny Barker with her first stone here in the eighth end trailing by two needs them to bury this one to have a chance with her final stone to perhaps put us into extra ends. Well, the sweepers aren't looking at this yet, which means it's a little heavy. They wanted this to curl, but they also were afraid to, to sweep it just because of the distance of it. And they wanted to sweep it a little bit to bury, but you can't slide far enough back that your second shot, it does come to rest as shot rock. Maybe nibbling the eight foot, or maybe nibbling the, the four foot, but uh, still partly in the open. Alina Pets can see enough to go after it. And if she can make this stone go away, she will uh, move her team into the semifinals this afternoon. Not wasting any time in the hack. She knows this shot. A very solid release, so they'll watch this very closely. Got room by the guard, so now sweeping to get a little bit more curl. Just needs to catch this thick enough to make it go away. She will. That runs Penny Barker out of rocks. Sylvana Terenzoni with the 4 2 win here in this quarterfinal on Sunday morning. They move into the semifinal this afternoon. Uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us here this morning on CBC Gem and Sastel Curling Stadium. We apologize for the audio difficulties that we had, and thank you for sticking with us. It was a great match to watch, and there'll be two more. The semifinals this afternoon, finals later on. On behalf of myself, Sean Joyce, and my partner this morning, Jeff Chambers, thanks for watching. We'll see you again for the semifinals. <laughs>